In this video, we quantify the changes to the freezing and boiling point of a solvent when you add some solute to it. In our prior video, we have examined how the use of chemical potentials allows us to uh, determine uh, the changes to the freezing and boiling point of a solvent in a mixture uh, from a qualitative point. And this is what we have here. This is how uh, the molar Gibbs energy of a solvent, those are the blue lines, uh, changes when you add a non-freezing, non-volatile solute to that solvent. Right. So what happens is that, well, because um, uh, the only changes happen to the liquid phase, that's uh, the only phase in which the solute uh, can exist, what happens is that there's a depression of that chemical potential. Uh, the chemical potential of the solvent uh, gets lowered by the presence of the solute. And when you examine that, you realize that then, if that's the case, then the boiling point of that solvent should go up when you add a solute to it, but the freezing point should go down. Now, what we do in this video is then uh, try to quantify exactly how those changes are. As it turns out, the equations uh, for that freezing point elevation and that boiling point depression are very straightforward. As a matter of fact, uh, they simply look like this. The change to the boiling point is simply a constant, uh, which we're going to call capital K sub B, and it is called the ebullioscopic constant, or the boiling point constant, times the molality of the solution, which we can write simply as uh, locus B of uh, the solute B. And the change to the freezing point is going to be straightforward as well. It just has the same form, right? So it also depends linearly on the molality of that solution, of that solute in the solution, but that is the freezing point constant, which we also call the cryoscopic constant. Now, uh, there are ways to actually derive this expression that we're not going to cover in this course, uh, but these are constants uh, that depend on properties of the solvent, like the molar mass and the enthalpy of the phase transition involved, right? So freezing or uh, vaporization, and uh, they're different for each uh, solvent. Right, so they will change from water to benzene and so forth. They also depend, uh, uh, again, on the solvent. Okay, so uh, uh, from here on, there's tables that actually provide what the values of the cryoscopic constant and the ebullioscopic constant are. And for example, for water, okay, so uh, this ebullioscopic constant uh, for water is 0 0.51 Kelvin kilograms per mole. And then uh, the cryoscopic constant for water is about three times greater, three and a half times greater uh, Kelvin kilograms per mole. Okay, so from this data, we can actually go ahead and then calculate uh, what would be the freezing point and the boiling point of a water solution, an aqueous solution, uh, with some concentration of a non freezing, non volatile uh, solute, say glucose, for example. And that concentration, we're going to make it be, uh, that molality is going to be 0 0.100 uh, um, mole of glucose per kilogram of water. Okay, so the question would be, well, what are the new uh, freezing point and boiling point of that uh, uh, water in that solution? Well, so we simply have to use these expressions. Okay, so notice that uh, you actually have everything that you need. You have the molality and then you have the values of the constants, right? So, so solving for those changes in the freezing and boiling point is straightforward. The only difficulty here is to recognize that the boiling point goes up, but the freezing point goes down. So when you actually uh, calculate this change to the boiling point, the final boiling point is greater uh, uh, than the initial boiling point. So this will be the new boiling point minus the initial boiling point, but because the freezing point goes down and this expression is positive, what that means is that this will be the uh, initial freezing point, and that is uh, the freezing point in the solution. Okay, so that is actually really uh, the only thing that uh, you have to worry about here. Okay, uh, that being said, uh, notice that if we take these values, right, so the uh, boiling point change will be 0 0.051 Kelvin, the freezing point change will be uh, 0 0.186 Kelvin. 
right? So then you can uh, uh, continue and then calculate what this uh, new uh, boiling point will be and the near freezing point will be, right? So your new boiling point, the boiling point of the solution would be uh, equal to the 0 0.051 Kelvin plus uh, the actual or the boiling point of pure water, 373.15 Kelvin. So this happens to be uh, 3.374, uh, 74, uh, uh, point two zero, oh, sorry, two, three, three, 373, okay, point 20 Kelvin. Okay, so it's a very, very, very small change uh, to the boiling point, and the freezing point then will be TF prime, will be uh, the actual freezing point of pure water, uh, minus the change in the freezing point, which is 0 0.16. Ooh. All right, so when you calculate that, you will see that uh, uh, the boiling point now is going to be 272.09 uh, uh, three Kelvin. Okay, so uh, this uh, kind of wraps up, uh, wraps up the uh, discussion uh, of, actually this is, this is not correct, this should be uh, minus 18, that should be 97. All right, uh, regardless of what the actual value is, uh, the important thing here is to recognize that we have a good tool to calculate changes to the freezing and the boiling point, and all that is rooted in chemical potentials. The questions are straightforward. The only thing that you really need to remember is that the boiling point goes up, and the freezing point goes down. Right, in the next video, we're going to be talking about osmotic pressure, which is another colligative property.